I think Shirley started this session this morning talking about time. And uh, I was just looking at those uh, slips up there, and I think the most common one was time waits for no one. Um, and somebody actually made a comment that actually is time waits for no man, but somebody said it's a very sexist uh, comment, so I've changed it, time waits for no one. And then the second thing was that time is value or time is money. We are running about 15 to 20 minutes late. Um, and we'll take that time off from Shelley's uh, concluding remarks um, at the end. But I think uh, what has happened so far, I think the, uh, the, the, title, the title of this colloquium was Towards Common Understanding of Flexible Learning. And I think what is coming out is that although it is, it, we can see that it's a very complex process, it's not a very simple and straightforward process, it's very exciting. I think, and uh, it can bring with it a lot of satisfaction, and we see now excited Cheryl was here about uh, what she's been doing, and also there's a lot of personal development that happens. Although we're doing this for the, for the students, it also leads to a lot of personal development for all of us that are involved in this. So having said those few words, um, I was looking at the the first uh, speaker um, at 12.35, uh, which is Professor William Zoukas. Unfortunately, I don't have to reintroduce you. But the, her report back is meta-level critical observations. And I hope everybody knows what meta-level critical observations are. I didn't know. I was quite confused. So maybe William can uh, spend one or two minutes on that uh, so that we know exactly what's happening. I tried to Google it, but um, while I was sitting at the back, uh, but I wasn't very successful in getting any answers. So I hand you over to Mary Thank you. Somebody walked off with the mic that works. <laughs> there are two other people to speak, so I'm just going to say two things. Three things. First of all, I just thought you should see that you were here today. And uh, thank you for letting me take your photographs. I didn't ask your permission. But I warn you that Shirley told me that I had to be the photographer. And you know what she's like. She'll use those photographs some way. Anyway, uh, so you have given your permission, haven't you? And if you haven't, then you better tell Shirley. The second thing that I wanted to say was thank you so much for the presentations of the case studies which I really enjoyed. I thought they were really, really, really interesting. And the third thing I wanted to do was, um, in order to give time for other people, was just to talk about the slide I have here, which I've been thinking about all day. Let me explain. So this is meta-level, i.e. I'm not going to talk directly about what people have been talking about, but I do want to talk about the theme of time. Um, I have a doctoral student who's been working on lifelong learning, and the focus she's had is on people who work, who are working their allotments. In the UK, and sometimes people call it plot holding, but basically you can get a square of land, um, traditionally I think a quarter of an acre, which you can use to grow vegetables and so on. And Kate has been looking at the learning that people engage in on the allotments. So it's been a really interesting pro project, and that's what she started with. And ironically, she's near the end of her thesis. The, the thesis is now a thesis about time. And that is her, her central focus. It's not a thesis about learning, which is where she thought she was. But the connection between learning and time is so intimate. So she talks about the allotment. She talks about seasonal time. It's like you know the changing of the season. She talks about clock time. She talks about plot time. So the, t the, the seasonal time and the plot time are different from each other. Plot time is the time you have on the plot. She talks about circular time, the significance of time kind of returning and returning and returning and returning. And I think in terms of thinking about these ideas of flexibility, one of the things we haven't talked about is the embedded linear notion of learning within most of our degrees. And maybe we need to come back and think again that flexibility also needs to embed within it different 
linear, not thinking always about everything as, as a kind of trajectory into the future. That linearity, I think, is, a, is an issue. And I could kind of hear people talking about it underneath. She talks about plant time, and of course plants have very different kinds of time depending on whether you're an annual or a biennial or a perennial or whatever. And I think her thesis is going to say some really fantastic things about time which will have relevance for us thinking about these notions of flexibility. Anyway, that, that, I found a, a picture of plots. She, she has one of those plots, I must ask her to point out which one it is. So that was the second thing that I wanted to say. And the third thing I want to say is um, that I'd like to hand over and give the rest of the time to the two other speakers. <laughs>